Captain and Pangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! And all creatures! And the creature oh, gonna oh. get you tonight! You better not turn out your bedroom light! You grab your head and give us such a bite! Hello and welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. The lovely little minx over to this side would be my sweet yet menacious charge, Tangella. And the tall fellow over to this side, who endlessly exhibits a solemn face, but who is in reality a somewhat rather nice guy, would be my modest butler, Mr. Livingston. And do we have a super fantabulous program in store tonight just for you? First up, our film. In the seven odd years we've presented our little show, I've always wanted to show this particular film. But alas, Disney would never allow it. Until now. For on this very evening we shall present for the first time ever on Creature Features, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, from 1954. Starring Kirk Douglas, James Mason, and Peter Lorre, this amazing cinematic gem... Half that amount. What? 10,000 Leagues. Odd. I'd always thought it was 20. No matter. Tonight we shall present 10,000 Leagues Under the Sea from 1954. The film we shall present is The Phantom from 10,000 Leagues from 1955. I must certainly think not. Look, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It's right there. You should know quite well by now that the producers would never use crayon on a cue card. You know, my job would be far easier to perform if I were not continuously duped by the likes of this one. Onward. Tonight we shall present The Phantom from 10,000 Leagues from 1955. I know nothing about this film other than it will not star the aforementioned thespians. It was not produced by Walt Disney himself, and I sincerely doubt there'll be any form of watercraft that even remotely resembles the Nautilus. But enough about the bloody film. Let us instead move on to our lovely guests. For tonight, we shall be joined again by husband and wife literary team, Gail and Raymond Orwig. Last time they were here, you'll recall they shared with us their book, Where Monsters Walked, a brilliant opus that documents the diverse locations in California where quite a few classic movies and television programs were filmed. Well, they've done it again with their new book, Fantastic Serial Sights of California. This book is similar to the last, but specifically details the sites used to create the classic serial shows like Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers, Captain Marvel, and many more. They'll give us the sordid details about their amazing adventures, tell us where they're off to next, and hopefully perhaps shed some light upon our movie, on the account I find myself somehow woefully unprepared for tonight's film. So don't go away, for it is to be another night of undersea frights, right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Good evening and welcome to Creature Features. We are with the Orwigs. You, you remember these folks? They, they did a book that looked much like this one, but was different. And now they did this one, which is not the same as the other book, right? It's right. a different right. book. Right. <laughs> right, fun stuff. Anyways, we're gonna talk about this, but first, how have you been? 
it's been, not it's, bad. Been a, it's been a couple of years, busy. right? Yes, it's been four years. Yeah, you've four been years. you've been tramping about the desert and looking for places, looking under stones for for movie sets and remains of sets. And yes. So, how would you describe yourself? A Hollywood explorer. Mm -hmm. Actually, a friend of ours, the forward us to our first book described us as uh, cinematic archaeologists. Cinematic archaeologists, <laughs> I love it. called it. No, we need more people like you. I, no, imagine like in the year 3000 when they're digging up things and they find the movie Jurassic Park. Uh, imagine how confused they'll be. Yes. Yeah, I would be confused. Anyway, so we're going to talk with Gail and Ray about their new book and uh, what that's all about. But uh, we're also going to watch The Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. You've both seen this film. Yes, we have. Did you like it? It's, it's pretty interesting. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lovely print, so it's at least it's it's going to be nice looking. But uh, has it looks, locations. It locations, looks like yeah. it looks like a rubber monster movie. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Typical fifties. Mm -hmm. A good one. Yeah. No, it's people people like those movies oh, in our do. audience. So, you know, I I can understand why because it reminds them of their childhood. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think right. so. Yeah. No fun stuff. All right. Well, what do you say we start this film? When we come back, we're going to talk about this new book. Sounds All good. right, off we go to Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. Don't go away, it's going to be fun.
touch that. William S. Grant, Special Investigator. Department of Defense, Washington. Well, I guess that makes it pretty official. Yes, I guess it does. His body is rigid with burns. The boat's charred, too. Yet there's no sign of fire. We better get him out of the water. I'll take care of him myself. Just thought I'd give you some help. all my vital statistics, let's have yours. Name, address, occupation, things like that. And the name's Baxter, Ted Baxter. The address, local hotel. Occupation, beachcomber and tourist. Length of stay, indefinite. Will that do? Tell me, how did you happen to pick this particular place? Know anybody in town? No. I have a letter of introduction to the head of the College of Oceanography here. Professor King? Which explains why I'm here at this particular minute. I was on my way to see him at his home when I stumbled in onto this. College of Oceanography yesterday, didn't I? That's right. I'm George Thomas, Professor King's assistant. You seemed a little anxious not to be seen. Well, I saw two strangers standing over a corpse. Not being the hero type, I decided this was no place for me. You planning to do a little diving, Mr. Thomas? This late at night? I'm an oceanographer. The ocean's my business, day or night. Anything particularly interesting around here? You'll keep out of this. You better not do any diving around here for a while. I want you to forget that you were even here tonight, understand? You're soaking wet. So I am. I saw a wonderful marine specimen. I went in after it. With the college on vacation, you're spending more time there than ever. I hardly see you anymore. I've never seen you this detached from me, from reality. I'm working on breathtaking things, Lois. Great things. And you still won't tell me what it is? Not yet. You've got your own staff consumed with curiosity. Even your secretary has asked me if I know what it is you're doing behind that tightly locked lab of yours. She's a sneaking, prying female. I should fire her. And I suppose George is quizzing you, too. A little. I think he feels a deep resentment because you cut him off from your work so. He's an opportunist, not a scientist. I don't trust him nor Ethel. They're both spying on me. I'm not here. I, I'm in bed. I've been in bed an hour. An hour, you understand? Oh, won't you come in? Thank you. Is Professor King here? I'm sorry, he's asleep. He went to bed an hour ago. Oh, I see.
Are you sure the professor's asleep? Tell him that Ted Baxter's here. It's urgent. What do you want him for? Please tell him. Dad? Dad? Hello YouTube viewers, have you subscribed yet? I see a few of you have forgotten to do so. I am somewhat disappointed. Please subscribe. Thank you. Welcome back. We are watching the Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. You know, this whole thing about radiation. The victim is covered with radiation. Yeah. That was a typical thing in the 50s. Well, yep. Radiation was responsible mm -hmm. for everything in the 50s. I, good things and bad, I imagine. Right? Yes. Yeah, radiation. That's what made Godzilla, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, Bikini Islands or whatever it was, they blew up and then all of a sudden you had Godzilla. They should learn, don't blow up nuclear bombs unless you want Godzilla or The Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. Anyways, we're not here to talk about this film. We're here to talk about Fantastic Serial Sites of California, which is their latest tome. So I have a question about this. Um, fantastic Serial Sites would be this like the Quaker Oats factory, <laughs> or would it be like General Mills? Well, you Captain could Crunch. You can, you <laughs> can have some it. while you're watching, of course. No, so. I think Captain Crunch is a fantastic cereal. Yep. Yes, it is, but right. different from what we wrote about. Yeah. I know what a cereal is, but you know, uh, some of it people don't. Tangela did not know what a cereal was. Oh, youngster. So yeah. let's get a, a, an explanation from professionals. What is a cereal? Do you want to go? Well, first of all, they started out early uh, in the century with silent cereals, actually. Right. And they were actually um, a lot longer uh, than the ones that you've seen later, the talking versions of right. the cereals. And uh, they were the, the length of the cereal itself was determined by the popularity of it. And, that makes sense. Yeah, and also a lot of ladies were uh, the heroines of these cereals, but they became more, after the 30s, I guess you would say, uh, they came, became more formulaic. Yeah, it would uh, in the 30s, 40s, and then in the early 50s. Well, a cereal is it's like a, a very long movie cut into segments. Yes, mm -hmm. I and, noticed this. Yeah, each segment 
always ends with somebody in dire peril. Yeah, or and some exciting thing. The cliffhanger. The cliffhanger. And right. that made you want to come and spend your money to come and see what happened the next week. <laughs> so they were always in theaters because, of course, there was no television. Correct. That's right. When this was right. started. Right. 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 The, th the theater was the center of a lot of communities' uh, activity. So would they take like a movie that they thought would not do well as a standalone movie and say, let's cut it up and make it into a serial. <laughs> not really. This... They actually did the reverse of that. Yeah. In, in the 40s and 50s, they turned some of the serials into feature films. Into feature films. Feature and films. they cut out a lot sense. of the scenes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it would, um, they would, they had writers that specifically created the uh, the stories for serials that work with the studios. I suppose you have to because yeah. it's like got a beginning and an end. Mm -hmm. And if somebody mm -hmm. walks in in the middle, mm -hmm. you can't just leave them hanging by saying, oh, uh, mm -hmm. who's, who's this bloke? with mm -hmm. the rocket on his back. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a small explanation at the beginning of each one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they would give a recap of what happened right. in the previous mm -hmm. right. chapter. Yeah. How wonderful, mm -hmm. how wonderful. So if you were to take all the serials in a typical serial series, you're saying it would be longer than the typical movie length. Yes, mm -hmm. sometimes three hours or more. Three mm -hmm. hours or yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. So, so they it's would cut gone it Gone with the wind with laser <laughs> oh, beams, yeah. right? Well, yes, very long. <laughs> right. All right, we're gonna find out about your adventures. But first, we need to get back to the film Phantom from 10,000 Leagues, which is not a serial. You can see the entire thing tonight. We will not leave you hanging on a cliff, right? Correct. Nope. Well, maybe we will. We'll try. See you soon. Other side of the break. My friend, the beachcomber. Supposing you tell me what your great interest in this thing is, Dr. Stevens. You work fast, don't you? Oh, I've learned quite a lot about you, Doctor. You'd be surprised how well Washington knows you. Care to hear how famous you are? Dr. Stevens, oceanographer, one of the leaders in this field, author of two highly controversial books, Biological Effects of Radiation on Marine Life, and nature's own death ray. You have been busy, Mr. Grant. There's more. Dr. Stevens, in a laboratory experiment, successfully activated the hydrogen isotopes in heavy water to form an atomic chain reaction. He called this development the first workable death ray. Suppose you tell me what you're doing with that Geiger counter. Well, I told you I thought the boat showed radiation burns. I wanted to verify it. I did. Scientific curiosity, you might say. And using the phony name, what's that for? That's for reasons of my own. I watched you yesterday, the way you looked out there, as if you expected something like this was going to happen. Am I to consider myself a suspect? What happened out there seems to tie in pretty closely with your own experiments. The evidence, if you can call it that, was highly circumstantial. Washington tell you anything else about me? Enough to make me keep my eyes on you. You know, if you leave me alone, I might be able to help you with this. And then again, maybe not. Harrison's boat this morning, burned like the others. They ain't found his body. That makes three of the Phantoms got. You know what they're saying in town? That nothing like this ever happened until they opened the school here. I can't say that I blame them. The way the professor's been acting, locking himself up in his room, he won't even let me in there to clean it. And all those noises coming from that room. I've got work to do, Andy. And that young one, George. What about George? He's following the professor around. 
follows him everywhere. I seen it. Hiding behind trees. Watches him all the time. It ain't normal, this carrying on. What's not normal, Andy? I'm not to be disturbed, you understand? Yes, sir. What have you got there, Ethel? Nothing, just a piece of scrap. Increase 0.56-24-64-32.70-18. Keeping right up with the professor, aren't you, George? I'm one step ahead of him. I've got to get into his lab, Ethel. You've got to help me get in there. It's worth a lot of money to me. You too. I could tell him what you're up to. You could. But you won't.
you leave your house? Through the door or through the open window like your father did last night? Through the door. I leave the window exits to Dad. Join me in a swim? No, I'm a little winded. How about you joining me in a rest? Maybe I can pick up some of that color you have. Care for a cigarette? Uh, no, thanks. Is something the matter? No, no. You seem a little nervous, Mr. Baxter. Why don't you call me Ted? Mr. Baxter sounds so formal, especially here at the beach. All right, Ted. Oh, it's too nice just to sit around. If you're not coming in for a swim, then I think I'll go in alone. Now, look, you can't go swimming. I don't like being told what to do. Well, it's not a case of my telling you what to do. It's just that it isn't safe out there. I think you're being a little ridiculous. Look, I've spent all my life near the water. I can handle myself under any situation. But I'm afraid you can't in this one. I'm going to insist that you stay out of the water at least for a while. Insist? Yes, you, you must trust me. You really mean that, don't you? I really do. Let's just say that I'd feel better knowing that you were safe here on the beach. For personal reasons. You ought to do that more often. Do what? Smile. I like it. Oh. Well, all I need is a bit of encouragement. And you've given that to me. is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Where in God's name are the Orwigs? They had some errands to take care of. No, I think she kicked them out and replaced them with octopi. Very many of them, actually. She does this sometimes. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we will be back soon with your wigs, but we're going to do some mail first because this one's here. Now, when she shows up halfway through the show, you know it's mail time. When she shows up at the end of the show, you know the movie's finished. Right? She's, she's like our little timekeeper. There's some logic to what you say. Right, right. What do you have for me, Mr. Livingston? Uh, lots of emails. I love emails. British Columbia. BC from Vincent J.J. Curley, Balfour, British Columbia. Yeah, he sounds like a lord of some kind. Might yeah. be. I, I bet he owns <laughs> a large piece of land. Hello, I've been watching you on YouTube for a couple of years now. Like, you think nonstop? I don't think so. All right. I really love your shows. Well, obviously, if you've been watching us for years, I wish everybody watched for years, and then everybody would love our shows as well. I live in a supposedly haunted resort built in 1897, the Balfour Beach Inn. 
I saw a television broadcast many years back about this place. It was called Creepy Canada. Uh, most of Canada is fairly creepy, right? No, it's actually quite nice. No, I know it's quite nice, but creepy like as in haunted. No, there's lots of haunted places in Canada. I think Canada means haunted in Inuit. I could be wrong. Uh, little did I know at the time I'd end up living here. I haven't seen a ghost yet, but the basement feels real creepy. I most certainly feel when I'm down there that I'm not alone. It is a very unsettling feeling. Anyways, I have wanted to see a movie I have not watched since I was 10. It is from 1958 called Monster on the Campus. I wish you could show it. You may have already, but I can't find any record of it. It's tough to find. I have searched for a long time and all I find are trailers. It had a big impact on me at 10. I would like to revisit it more for nostalgia than anything. Thanks for your show. I'm always entertained by your banters, the whole cast. Cast, what does he mean cast? I'm not sure. All right. Uh, some of your guests are super interesting. Vincent's hairstyle is remarkably comparable to a local woman I know, and she is very odd. Well, if she's got <clears throat> hair like this tonight, I can see why. The neighbors think she's from another planet. She is definitely a lone wolf. She has 16 cats and live, lives alone in a large old house with a fenced in yard. Yeah, he's saying this woman's weird because she's got cats and he lives in a haunted resort with a creepy basement. You know, I think you two should become friends, sir. The pot calling the kettle. Exactly. Anyways, take the show. Hope I will get to see Monster on the Campus again. All the best to you, Vincent Curley, Balfour, British Columbia. All right, so this film, Monster on the Campus. Have you seen this one, Tom? I have not. We're going to look into that for you, and if we can run it, we will run it, because, it, you know, we've never shown a Monster on the Campus film, have we? Not that I'm aware of. No, no, no monsters on campus, and I think it's a wonderful topic. And then, since our friend Vincent likes it, because he has such a good name... I, think I should, thought that was going to should, come up. We should do it as well. All right, thanks for writing, Vincent. Next up, Mr. Livingston. From You're Will, awfully quiet over there, Tangelo. Will you to Benedetti. Know? Benedetti. You're awfully quiet over there. What are you doing? She's always quiet. No, but what she she knows she's she's up to no good when she's quiet. Indeed. All right, Will Benedetti. He's an Italian, I imagine. He's got a name that ends in I. That's how you tell you now, if the name ends in I. What if it's Portuguese? I don't know any Portuguese with I at the end of the name. If they are, they're probably Italian Portuguese. Hello, Vincent Tangela and Livingston. I found your channel yesterday and subscribed. Thank you. I have a question as well as going out on a limb about some movies. Friday night live streaming shows sound great. However, as often as you say the word Friday, there's an extreme lack of an actual time given. So what time Friday should I eagerly log into my computer? Well, since that's a YouTube thing, um, you can set up an automatic notification, right? Yes. We, do it, we do it at 8 p.m. Pacific time. So if you do the math to figure out how Pacific time relates to you, where is he? You didn't say. Uh, Pacific time, 8 p.m. Pacific time, unless we change it, right? It has not well, been he's changed not even, yet. He's not, he's not even there. He doesn't even know. It's my day off. That's right. Now, there are two movies I've been trying to find from my collection. If you found one or both and showed them, it would be nice, but I would be happy just getting a lead on where I could buy them for myself. Most movie sources I've asked ignored my questions. Isn't that terrible? They do that to us as well. And, you know, it's like I'll go, hey, do you have the movie with the monster and the thing? And they'll go, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you have to be more specific. Well, it's got the monster and the thing. There are many monsters and things. Right, well, so they can name them, and I will say, no, it's that one. Ah. He's, you know, he's always playing devil's advocate. Uh, the first was on afternoon network television when I was a kid. I'm giving away my age saying that much. No, you're not, because you haven't told us when this was. People were on an island with three giant animals, a crab, an octopus, and I forget what the third was. At one point, one of the monsters is killed, and one of the characters goes mad because he's exposed to its blood. Other than that, I don't remember much about it. As a kid, I liked it for the giant creatures. Now I'd sort of like to see what the plot was about. I vaguely remember that the name was the Mod Monsters or the Mad Monsters. Any of that ring a bell? Doesn't ring a bell at all. No, yeah, all right. But the blood driving people mad makes, makes me remember something. All right, he's going to look into this for you. He's, he, he's seen it, so we'll see. 
Uh, does any of this sound familiar? If so, could you at least give me the name so I can try to find a copy? The second was made for TV movie that ran on the UPN network before it became the CW. It was a spoof on monster movies called Monster Movie. I thought it was funny. I would like to buy a copy, but contacting the CW gets me no information on where it may be found. Anyhow, I'm catching up on your older episodes and look forward to watching your new productions, Will Ben Daddy. All right, uh, I, you know, we're going to look into the both these for you. And if we, if we can get them, we're going to run them. And if we cannot get them, we'll... Then we won't. No, we'll send you a tube of toothpaste. It'll be Prel, concentrate. Or is that shampoo? I think that's something for the hair. Shampoo. I, I hear you can use it for both. The four carries. Oh, uh, we've heard from the four carries before. Patricia and John, they say, love your show. Patricia and I are big fans. Unfortunately, the show went off the air on Coffee TV 20 San Francisco and was replaced with boring cowboy movies. That's not exactly accurate, sir. Uh, coffee is gone. So everyone who is on coffee, no more coffee dance party, no more creepy coffee movie time. It's no all more Westerns. Clown show, no more. None of that, it's all gone. No more dogs barking at the TV, remember that? Uh. The bumpers, they'd have bumpers with the dog with bark team. Anyways, so we just sort of went away. I think they're going to be back. That's my theory. No, I don't think the, the, the cowboy movies are doing too well. No, they're trying to be Yellowstone, and they cannot be Yellowstone because they're not Yellowstone. It's, it's, it's quite apparent. All right. Uh, Patricia and I watch on YouTube, and it's just not the same. We love your show. The three of you do a great job. Take care. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, yes, it is not the same. It's better. There's no commercials. We show the entire film. We don't have to cut up the film. Because we had to do that on, on coffee. We had to cut it for the, the time limitation, and we had to cut it for commercials. And, and you were complaining because you don't have to watch commercials anymore, John. Some people. We love you. Have a happy Christmas. Next up, Mr. Lit. We have a lot of these. Australia. Australia. I love Australia. You know what, what kind of animals are in Australia? Kangaroos? No, Australian animals. Australia. And kangaroos, which oh. is an Australian animal. Rose Loda. Oh, that's a definitely an Australian name. Rose Loda. Imagine. Hello, Rose. Hello, Rose Loda. It's, a, it's an Australian name. I think she's a native. Hello, Vincent. Love the theme song to the show. Great guitar riffs. Also love Tangela's groovy dancing. She's not, you know, she dances more than she talks, I'll tell you that much. Would love to hear more of your songs in the show. Well, you can. We have a soundtrack now. You know about this, right? Unfortunately. No, no don't give me this, unfortunately. It's, it's, this is the business I know, selling music. So you could buy, you could buy the soundtrack for our show. It's, uh, I think, 24 tracks. 24 it's tracks. All the music, including the opening song, the full-length version of the opening song. You know, most people have not heard it. They've heard the 60 seconds that we play. That's a two-and-a-half-minute song. Anyways, go to the website you see right here. I think that's it, maybe. It'll, it'll get you there. And uh, you can get it. Uh, thank you, Rose. Hope things are well in Australia. And here's the last one from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh. I love Pittsburgh. Everyone's nice in Pittsburgh. You know, I went there once, and I had so many people offer to park my car for me. Really? They did. No, it's, it's, it's quite, a, it's like everybody wants to be valet parker or something. I think yeah. they want your car. Well, they want to park my car, All right. That's Elsewhere. He's such a pessimist. All right, this is from Bruce Hyman, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Dude, most British people are cool, but I don't know about you. Oh, this is not starting off well, don't you? Don't you agree with the letter writers? Unless they say something nice about me. Or you. Oh, yeah. You may not want to agree with this guy yet. Uh, I, I shall read on. Why don't you get a haircut and play some better movies? Yeah, he's got a point. I do need a haircut. Especially, look how awful it looks today. No, this is because there's moisture in the air. It's the weather. No, I told you we need to get a dehumidifier for this place. And my hair would not do this. All right, uh, why don't you get some better movies like Terrifier 2 or Studio 666? Hell, I'd even watch your show if you ran that crummy monster movie that Rob Zombie did. This, this bloke wants films that are like in the th cinema right now. Mm. 
We can't afford that. Not even uh, bloody Apple can afford to do that yet. You, no. you always have to wait. If you go on Apple TV, it's like, okay, you can watch this film in a month from now, right? Because they, they can't afford it. So now, we cannot do those films because they're too new. They have to be old and moldy before we can show them. It's, it's the law, right? It's our predicament. Want. It's our predicament. Tell the butler to take a toke and mellow out. That dude looks like he's ready to have a conniption fit and lose it. That's somewhat contradictory. I don't know. Uh, the girl seems okay, but she'd be cool if she went to cosmetology school so she could do her makeup correctly. Yeah, he, he might have a point there. That's it. Peace out. Bruce Hyman, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Well, thank you for writing, Bruce. Uh, I don't know uh, what else to say. I, I'm, I'm speechless on this one, right? No words, but hope things are well in Pittsburgh. Is that it, Mr. Livingston? That's it. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send us email of your own, use the address you see appearing over by my shoe. Or if you'd like to send something in the post, which we did not check this week, right? No, we did not. We'll check it next week. If you want to send something in the post, send it to the address you see right here. We'll be back soon with Gail and Ray Orwig. But first, let's get back to the Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. down to the supply room and get some ocean current charts. Yes, sir. Professor King, I wonder if I might have a few words with you alone. Ethel, I believe you were on your way down to the supply room. I called on you at your home last night, but you'd gone out for a walk through an open window. Yes, my daughter Lois told me that a Mr. Baxter had called. I got a terrible scolding on your account. I'm afraid you ruined my favorite device for getting out of the house when I can't sleep. Professor, uh, I saw a fisherman's body washed up on the shore last night. These men get very careless. They think they rule the sea, but it's just the opposite. The sea rules us, Mr. Baxter. Uh, this man wasn't killed by a natural force. His body was rigid with radiation burns. I think whatever killed him was man-made. Indeed. <laughs> Very interesting. Although not within my scope as an oceanographer. Just what is it you want of me, Mr. Baxter? Well, I'd like a detailed study of the ocean in this vicinity. The depth and the composition of the floor. Anything that you might have. It'd take a little time to gather them. I'd like them as soon as possible. Oh, I told my daughter I wouldn't work this afternoon. Why don't you come to the house uh, about three? Say, if you get there before I do and Lois is out, just go on right in. The house is generally unlocked. Well, that'll be fine. And by the way, I take it you are working with Mr. Grant, the federal investigator. You might say so. Come in now, miss. I hope you found the conversation interesting. You're an inquisitive woman, aren't you, Ethel?
At least you might have knocked. Well, I did. And your father told me to open the door and come in. He would. Uh, would you mind handing me those things there? Surely. Thanks. Is Father expecting you? Yes. Would you mind helping me with this zipper? Of course. You're an awful long time with that. Mission completed, sorry to say. Hello. I'm sorry I'm late. Well, now that Dad's here, will you excuse me? Oh, surely. I hope these are what you wanted. Dr. Stevens. I've read your books very thoroughly, Doctor, on which, incidentally, your photograph appears. Well, maybe it's just as well you know who I am. Have you charted the area around Baker's Cove? The area where the... Accidents occurred? No, I don't think we got around to that. We've only been here two years, you know. Well, you've mapped other areas in this vicinity. A few years ago, a submerged deposit of uranium ore was found along this coast. Is there any evidence of a similar deposit along here? No. Not to my knowledge. Why? Why, this morning I made a test dive over the area where the accidents have taken place. They weren't accidents. There's a shaft of light coming up out of the ocean. I have reason to believe that it's nuclear in character. Now, any object coming in contact with this light would be subject to extreme radiation. I believe this light killed three men. Incredible. You say you made a... Close examination of this light? Not as close as I would have liked to. It was being guarded by a sea serpent. A hideous beast that defies description. Oh, Doctor, if I didn't know that you were a scientist of high standards, I'd say that you were the victim of the ridiculous phantom stories that are running wild around the village. Professor, you say you've read my stories. Indeed, I have. Much of my work is based on your findings. Well, then you must remember my experiments on activating the hydrogen isotopes in heavy water. Oh, but that was on a miniature scale in the laboratory with a lot of equipment. But on the ocean floor... I proved it could be done. I used artificial means to start the reaction. Then you think that with the submerged deposit of uranium ore, you can get the same reaction on a much larger scale? A weapon like this could destroy anything coming in contact with it. Oh, fantastic. Once the chain reaction had started, it could continue indefinitely. As a matter of fact, keep growing larger. And what about the, the beast down there? Was he man-made too? I believe so. Since marine life lives in a constant flow of heavy water, the effect of radiation on it would be completely different than it is on humans. Well, that's, that's your theory on mutations, isn't it, Doctor? Yes. And if what I believe is true, this monster that I saw in the ocean was a mutation of some sea creature. You see, it draws its energy from the nuclear light itself, just as plant life needs the sun to grow on. Well, have you any evidence to support this fantastic theory? I created such a mutant in my own laboratory. Oh, come now, Doctor. I destroyed it, just as this creature must be destroyed, and the knowledge that went into creating it. Do you think that that knowledge might have come out of my college? 
Since I am head of that college, obviously. Professor, in science we look for one thing and find another. We split an atom and the hydrogen bomb has evolved. We set up a simple experiment or study on underwater life. Something new and horrible is created. I feel as if I and my experiments are suspect. Well, I haven't overlooked that possibility. If it were a matter of pure science alone, I'd be inclined to examine you most closely. However, there's another element. Another element? The person responsible for this terrible weapon has offered it for sale to the highest bidder. For sale? I don't believe it. Hello. Yes, Mr. Grant. We'll have them ready for you in the morning. That's right. Goodbye. Grant's going to make a dive in the morning. He's borrowing some equipment from us. We, we can't let him go down there. Why not? Well, in view of what you told me, I, I thought, but it's not safe for him to go down there. Why are you staring at me, doctor? You seem so skeptical when I told you the results of my test dive. Yet you show genuine concern for Mr. Grant's safety. Good day, Professor. Despite my previous protestation, I see a few of you have still not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet. Please, I implore of you to do so. Thank you. You know, I think you should do an advert where your book is dancing. <laughs> we hadn't thought of that. <laughs> Maybe the, the dancing tale of cereals. Welcome back to the show. We are watching The Phantom from 10,000 Leagues with our friends Ray and Gail Orwig, who wrote this fantastic <laughs> book, which we're going to talk about in a moment. It's about cereals and not breakfast cereals, right. but cereals with an S, I've been informed. <laughs> so uh, famous, what, what are some of the more famous cereal movies? Oh. Um, oh, Superman. Batman. Superman and Batman. Yeah, they started out as serious. You know, they make big movies with them. Yeah, yes. Adventures of Captain yeah. Marvel was another oh, one. Another great Captain one. Marvel, that's a good one. And then uh, oh. Radar Men from the Moon was mm -hmm. a great one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, Radar Men from the Moon. You know, I recall this, this one. This was uh, one about men from the moon who had radar guns, right? <laughs> Something like More that. More or less, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, that was a good one. Yes. That was a good one. All right. And uh, so you guys... You write these books where mm -hmm. you go to places mm -hmm. where they film things, mm -hmm. and in this case, these serials, mm -hmm. and you expose them. And this book is full of photos. So yes. like if, if you buy this book, when you buy this book, <laughs> you'll see there's many, many photos, and uh, you took every single one of these photos. Yes. You went back in time to the 40s <laughs> with this shot, because this looks like it was taken in the 40s. Now, there's some shots here that obviously you did not take because they were like long ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. But all the modern shots you took. Yes. That's correct. And you visit these places. So what do you do? You show up in like some poor bloke's yard and say, I understand they filmed a scene from a movie here. We would like to have a picnic on your front porch. Well, not, well the not first a, part of that is probably correct. Yeah. We, we do show up in a few people's yards. <laughs> some uh, of them but, even know that, they, that these were shot there. They do. Yeah. Yeah. But we uh, we don't usually hold picnics in their yards. Right. Uh, but yeah, we'll um, we we scout out usually on the internet where uh, we think a location is, um, trying to match up the photographs, and uh, then we plan a trip. So there's science involved here. Oh, it's not yeah. like you've got a guidebook no. that That's says right. this go is to the these yeah. go to this <laughs> GPS coordinate and you will find this. You no. have to like 
do some cartography. Yeah. And there's a lot of different methods we use to find them, yeah. too. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I bet Google Earth is your friend. Oh, definitely. Yes, to right. make sure we're going to right. the right place. Right, right. Definitely. right. Definitely. Yes. So, so you must have some, some difficulty, though, with things that change from the photograph, like, oh, that forest was not there, there before. That big hedge wasn't there. Yes. Right, right. No, no one in Los Angeles trims their hedges. <laughs> That's true. No, I, I, I wanted to trim mine, and they said, no, don't. Yes. I well, luckily, why. things like the, the rocks and Iverson are still there, That's Iverson the, Ranch. Yeah. So we have to get back to this film, but I want to ask you one question before we go. What is the most dangerous place you've been for this book? Oh, for this book? Right. This was a pretty safe one. We, yeah. we had a few right. in the other book that were a little, little, little shaky. Dodgy. All yeah. right, give us one from the other book. Oh, the uh, them, tunnel. them, the tunnel where they shot part of the movie Them. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Why? Uh, well, it's um, it, the, the part of the town is kind of the part of town is not the greatest in well, Los is, Angeles. Is it like a, a, a tunnel under a road? Or what mm -hmm. is it? Yeah, it goes right. un, it goes underneath the railroad tracks and down to the L.A. River. Oh. And there's uh, some reasonably dodgy You know, the folks. L.A. River is dangerous. There's Terminators. Yes, that's In true. the L.A. River, you have to watch it. Do not take a motorbike. No. Down through the L.A. River. No. The Terminator will come. Yep. I, this is documented in a film. I'll, I'll tell you about it during the break. All right, we're going to get back to the Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. And when we get back, we're going to talk some more about this book. But we need to talk about your other book because oh, there were some true. exciting things that happened in that as well, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, off we go. Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. Don't go away because it's going to make me very, very sad. Ethel. Did I startle you? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you come out. I forgot to tell you that Mr. Grant wants to pick up a full set of diving equipment tomorrow. Have it ready for him. Yes, sir. And tell George and the night watchman in case you're not here. Yes, sir. Ethel, I consider you an intelligent woman. A bit bitter, perhaps. No great lover of mankind, but still intelligent. I'd like your opinion. What would you consider a just punishment for a man or woman who would betray his fellow man for money? One who would take a scientific discovery of monumental scope and use it to line his or her pockets. I, I don't know. Would you consider death just? Well? No matter. You can tell me some other time. Mr. Grant, please. He shouldn't have come here. I may have been followed. There was a time when you would have welcomed me under any circumstances. You've got federal men investigating. They must know something. They're planning on making a dive tomorrow. A dive? They've got to be stopped. How? That's your problem. You shouldn't have come here. I had to. I got a cable from Antwerp. I'm to fly there in two days. They're expecting me to bring some vital information from you. I'm not ready. You were ready enough to accept a considerable sum of money in advance, weren't you? I won't know anything until I can get into King's lab. Then get in. Butt your way in. I tried that with his secretary. It didn't work. You're facing some serious problems, George. You have two days in which to find the answers. I'll be leaving for Europe the day after tomorrow. Where will I find you? I'll be spending most of my time soaking up a little sun at Colby's Point. That's where we used to meet, remember? I remember. For quite a while, we were just a man and a woman, weren't we? I 
They didn't know then they could put beauty and poison so cleverly together in one package. <laughs> Point, remember. Is it all right to talk here? Go ahead. I can tell you what you want to know. All right. I hope my caller feels the same way about it. I'm sure he will. Dr. Stevens is very observing. He's a bright young man. Sometimes I think he's too bright. Too bright? I don't understand what you mean. Oh, just an old coot thinking out loud. You know, science is a devouring mistress. She devours all who seek to fathom her mysteries. And for every secret she reveals, she demands a price. A price that a scientist must be prepared to pay. Even at the cost of his life. Or the life of others who stand in the way of his search. You, you say that almost as though you were threatening me. You? <laughs> what nonsense. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Evening. I dare say you two won't mind being left alone. Beautiful. Which is a good opening line for any date. Oh, I've got more. But they require an entirely different setting. How about a nice walk along the ocean? He may fool the rest of you with his soft voice, but not me. He's a killer. You can't accuse King of Treason just because you hate him. I'll accuse him of anything. He sent my only son out in a squall to get his filthy ocean specimens. To proof, Ethel. I need proof. He works behind those locked doors of his. If I could just get in there, I could get you all the proof you want. We may be able to figure out something along those lines. If I could show you how to make a wax impression of those locks, could you do it sometime tomorrow? I'm sure I could. Come on. Hi, Vincent, Tangela, and Livingston. I just want to say I'm a huge fan of your guys' show. I grew up watching Saturday Night Dead with Stella the Maneater from Maniunk back in the 80s, and I'm so glad to see a show reminiscent of that old horror host Kyle, you guys rock, and Tangela is so cute with her little facial expressions that she does. And Livingston, he's the man, and Vincent, yo, you're awesome, bro. Thank you so much. You guys rock.
Hello, this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have the desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Ms. Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Radioactive boxes under under the under the sea. That's not a good thing. No. No. You know, my theory is a submarine misplaced their radioactive box. Right? Yeah, it's possible. Possible. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We are watching the Phantom from Ten Thousand Leagues with Ray and Gail Orwig. And they wrote not just one book, but two. Two books. Yeah, and you know what's amazing about these books is they both look similar, and they're almost the exact same thickness. It's almost like you guys had some meter that said, all right, we're on page 2,000, let's stop, because it's time to stop. We don't want to outdo the other book. But, you know, one unique thing I notice is the older book smells newer. That's a new, new copy. New copy. New copy. <laughs> but should not the newer book smell newer? I guess it depends I'm on where confused. they keep the warehouse. I'm confused. You know, this whole publishing business thing is, is hey, look, it matches your shirts. Mm -hmm. I did, did not even realize. Mm -hmm. This image is everywhere. Who designed this image? Actually, that was our publisher that came up with the idea mm -hmm. for was that. Was it? Yeah. yeah, we thought it was really yeah. neat. We gave them the photos that we thought would be good, and right. they designed it after that. No, these are wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I like the way you have pins on yeah. maps. Yeah, we thought that, that was good. That no, that, was their that's idea. like that's like mm -hmm. telling it, explaining what you do. Yeah, you put pins on maps. We do. Do you have like an actual large map in a large map room where you? Yes. Like that one movie. We yeah, we we, we do should. have quite a few maps. <laughs> you should, of course. All right. So what do we got here? Posters. What are these? Ooh. Yeah, these are some of the ones from our our first book. Robot Monster. Yes. I've seen this film. Yes. I don't think we. Tom, have we shown that film yet? I uh, no, we have not. I don't think we need to show that oh, film yeah. because that is the most ridiculous <laughs> monster costume. It's it's a gorilla and he's got a space helmet with a skull face. Definitely it's, one of them. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> infamous. No, it, it's it's like it was supposed to be a gorilla and they lost the head. <laughs> so they said we're going to use this instead. Just go with it. Yep. I could be wrong. And Plan 9 from Outer Space, we've shown that film. We have. I think we show, we've shown it twice. Plan, that's, that's Ed Wood. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's fantastic. We, we know his reincarnated son. No. no. What, the, the bloke in Texas that gives us the movies. Oh, yeah, Josh. Josh Kennedy. Yeah. He's, he's going to be the next... Plan Nine from Outer Space, man. The next oh. Ed Wood. Oh, I guarantee. No, he's <laughs> he's he's just as good, maybe better. All right, wonderful. So those two movies you covered in your book where monsters walked. Yep. This is the first first book, and uh, tell us something about this film. Plan Nine. Um, a couple of locations in that. Um, one, well, is a grave up in the San Fernando Valley. Right. A uh, cemetery. That's one of the locations for that. Um, Tor Johnson's house. Tor is Johnson's one. house is up in Silmar. Yeah, nice. It, it played the old man's house yeah, in the movie. Yeah, it played uh, Bela right. Lugosi's house. Oh, that was not Bela Lugosi's house. No, that uh, was oh, actually yeah. Tor Johnson's house. Oh, wow. In Silmar. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. You know who lived in Silmar was the blood that was inside the Lost in Space robot. Yeah, oh, no. Bob, Bob May. Bob May. Bob May, yeah. Or he may not, yeah, but Bob may. may. <laughs> Bob May have lived in Silmar. No, I know he lived in Silmar. Yeah. So uh, you went to all those places. Yes. 
Yeah, ancient photographs. Ahead. Is Toll Johnson's home still there? If the house it is still is. there. It looks, <laughs> except for a little fence in the front yard, it's still identical to when the movie was wow. shot. Wow. Yeah. So did you have a picnic in the front yard? Uh, no. no. We took because the fence we, was in the way. Yeah, we took a picture right. as we drove by. And there by. wasn't big bushes <laughs> in it either. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Did the neighbors come out and hose you away? From... Yeah, well. <laughs> we, I think that might have happened yeah. to a friend of ours. Yeah. <laughs> so we just took a picture as we drove by. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Well, you know, you shouldn't be so bashful. I mean, I, I, so these people were warned when they purchased a house. You know, Tor Johnson owned this house yeah, if before you move in. Yeah, in the front in. yard, we do ask them. Yeah, we do ask them. We did that right. with the house of uh, Boris Karloff's mm -hmm. and another one of Lugosi's. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They all knew, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And some, yeah, sometimes they do know and sometimes they don't. And like one time, uh, it was, uh, I married a monster from outer space. space yeah. They, right. She wondered what the house looked like with shutters. <laughs> because back wow. when uh, we took the, uh, in the original film, it had shutters, but they had right. had shutters when she lived in there. So She also confirmed that they used the inside of the house and the backyard as well. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> so, Speaking yeah. of shutters, you know who I bet shutters is the people who own the house from Baking Bad. Oh, yes. they No, I, I saw a YouTube video indicating how much trouble they have with all the people who show up and want to take photos in the front. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh and this then, is Doubtfire House in San Francisco, too. Like right, too, yeah. and then Amityville House, mm -hmm. which also, I think is in Amityville, right? Also from Halloween, the yeah. houses that were used the there. The house from Halloween, right, right. That's why in our book we always say, don't pester the neighbors. Yes. <laughs> don't pester the neighbors. That's good advice for anyone, Yeah. right? Even sure. if you're not into this. Mm -hmm. All right, well, speaking of into this, shall we get back into the fandom from 10,000 Leagues? Sounds good. All right, off we go. We will see you after the break.
better be getting home. It's late. It's been a lovely evening. Yes, it was pleasant. And it did go fast. Mostly in talk about my father and the college, now that I think of it. You've learned a great deal about him. <laughs> Natural curiosity about a fellow scientist. There were some very pleasant moments of silence, too. We really should go. All right. Call Bill Grant. You'll find him at the hotel. Tell him I'll wait here for his instructions. Hurry, please. worse than the fisherman was. I think it's about time we did something about this. We? Am I off your list of suspects? Earlier today, I had a long talk with Washington. You were the topic of conversation. Am I to be shot at sunrise? They told me to cooperate with you. You could have floored me. They put you on this case, too, and didn't even tell me about it. I thought they would eventually. Apparently, they wanted two completely indifferent investigations of this. One from a scientific point of view and one from a, a gumshoe, government style. Pacific College of Oceanography. You know, this spear may be our first real break. Kind of narrows the field down, doesn't it? Yes, it seems so. I think I'll take it down to the crime lab and have them dusted for prints. How about you going down to the college and picking up some diving equipment? I checked with Professor King, and he said the night watchman would give it to us. Okay. What do you say we make our dive about 6 a.m.? Yeah. Bill, I made a test dive yesterday. It's pretty grim. There's a shaft of radioactive light down there. Touch it, and you're dead. And if that isn't enough, there's some kind of a, uh, an animal standing guard over it. Then there really is a basis for these phantom stories? I'm afraid there is. This will take care of it. And I won't miss. Now, my principal interest is the light ray. Now, you will have to draw whatever it is down there away so I can get a good look at that light. And Bill, now, it isn't going to be easy or pleasant. Neither is this.
Still want to go in? Feel all right? Okay. I'm picking up King and his assistant. What for? The poison in that mask came from the college, and so did the spear that was fired at you. So we can prove a charge of attempted murder. That's not what we're after. We want to know who created that thing and how to destroy it. Don't you understand, Bill? It's the knowledge, the know-how that went into making that ray. That's the real danger. That all ties together. We were getting too nosy, so King tried to get rid of both of us. Maybe it was George. Maybe both of them. Secretary could be tied into it for all we know. Now, nah, rule her out. We were well talking. She tells me she can prove that King's behind this whole thing. Prove it? Oh, I rigged up a set of keys for her to get into his laboratory. She tells me all the proof I need is right in that room. I hope she's right. We'll know tonight. One of the spear guns is missing. I saw King take one out yesterday. That's odd. I thought I saw you carrying one when you left last night. You see too much, Ethel. You should wear blinkers. Is he in yet? No.
I've got to get in there today. Break the door down. He mustn't know, Ethel. This is important to me, as important as staying alive. I can't help you. This is serious. I'm in trouble. You like that, don't you? I have too much trouble of my own to worry about yours. that you and Mr. Grant made to die. Yes. I'm glad I learned about it after it was all over. I phoned the college. They told me your father was at home. He was terribly upset when he heard the news. The boy, the one in the boat. He was one of his students. Oh, that's a shame. I'd like to talk to your father. You wish to speak to me? Well, yes. I thought you might be interested in the results of the dive we made this morning. The very fact that you're here now tells me that your phantom, as well as your light ray, is a myth, a hoax. <laughs> they both exist. The light ray, as you call it, is very definitely atomic and deadly. The only reason I'm alive is because I made sure I didn't come in contact with it myself. It's all too preposterous for serious thought. Phantom, marine mutations, death rays, utter nonsense. I'm afraid, Doctor, that you are the victim of an overwhelming imagination. Good day, Dr. Stevens. You don't look well, George. Or is it just that I don't find you attractive anymore? Nothing's going right, Wanda. I don't know if I can get what they want. They won't like it. And when they don't like something, they're liable to be a little extreme in showing it. They might even come to the same conclusion that I came to last night. That you're of no use to us. Last night? Ethel. King's secretary was crying your little heart out to Mr. Grant. I saw them. Government man? I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I'm pretty sure I caught your name. She knows enough about me to... Evidently, she hasn't told him what she knows yet. What do I do, Wanda? I know what I do. I'll be here tomorrow, too. But don't come unless you have something for me. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com the official merchandiser of Creature Feature Accessories.
Welcome back if you're just joining us. I, I have no words for you. I, who would come this late onto a program? No, the, the program's almost over. You should switch over to the, the fishing channel. I, I hear they're hunting bass tonight. No, but for those of you who were with us before, uh, we are still with Gail and Ray Orwig watching the Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. And uh, this is an actual lobby card. Correct. From this film. Mm -hmm. We're going to put big one up soon. But, uh, you know, I have a question about this. Uh, this is supposed to advertise the film to mm -hmm. make people want to go see it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is face. This face does not say come see this movie it says <laughs> it's like she's saying go away you don't want to see this silly film right i mean don't you see that in her face oh, she's just been shot with a spear gun yeah. so that might yeah. have something oh, is that to what happens? Yes. cut her some slack yeah <laughs> well we don't know this oh. so, somebody standing in a lobby trying to buy a popcorn would not know that she's got a spear in her backside. But they would wonder what, why she why looks like that. Why she's running yeah. on the beach. All right, all right, I'll give you that. So, you're using this to find a film location. Let's say you want to find this location right here. Okay. Tell me, what would you do? I, I shall give this to you. Well, there's a couple of things. Uh, first off, you got to watch the film carefully. Look for any details you can find. Right. Like you're looking at the background hills, the contours of the hills. Right, it's That's like one, puzzle pieces. Right, one right. clue. Another is, since we know it was shot in Southern California, if you see water on the right, you're looking south. If you of see water course. on the left, you're looking north. Right. Unless and, it's a lake. Well, we know this is ocean. Right. <laughs> and then, it could uh, be a big lake. It could be a very big lake. If it was Lake Michigan, you'd have a problem with that. Right. Yeah, it wouldn't be a California location. No. Then. Yeah. But then you're also looking for houses. Oh, right, I can see some small homes there. And, and like you said in the last segment, sometimes these homes still exist. Yes, mm -hmm. right? many times. And look the same. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's amazing. very much so. Right. So those are a couple of the techniques uh, we and would And there's use. lots of driving after that. A lot of driving, a lot of hiking too sometimes. Right. Yeah. You can also check Internet Movie Database online. Sometimes they oh. actually mention some oh, of the right. locations that are made in there. Right. And then in the press books that come out with the films, they yeah. also mention, mention some of the that. locations. It's, it's something like a treasure hunt, isn't it? It is. It is. It is. It's very fun. <laughs> so when do. you find it and you know you found the spot, is it like, woohoo, open champagne? Well, usually, at least a seven up. <laughs> yeah, usually, open a seven up. Yes. Usually it's, okay, we got this one. What's the next one we need to go to? Oh, no, it's work. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's uh, a recent You don't stay to enjoy it. Maybe... Roll Maybe out a, a few blanket minutes. and have a picnic. <laughs> yeah. No? All Maybe right. for a couple of minutes. But usually it's, we have a, a recent trip we took at 45 different locations we had to photograph. And so. 45? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so it was stop, take the picture, what's next? Oh my goodness. Yeah, not too so much. Who's the, who's the photographer of this dynamic duo? Um, actually, we both split the job on that. Sometimes one Is of it us so terrible you have to split it? <laughs> <laughs> No, no. I do photography. I love it. No, it's fun. No, we enjoy that. And occasionally right. we insert ourselves in the pictures, yeah. too. No, I, yeah, I was going to say you should. In fact, I suggest in the next book yes. that you have Gail reenact photos like this. Um, we have one from the next book where I'm lying on the ground in a park in um, Culver exactly. City. Exactly. So you're this ahead is, of us by a, this a step. This is it. This is, you, yeah, we made sure the, the, the brow was clean. Yeah. Right. No, how to be in the movie later. Yes. Right? Yes. That'd be the way to do Those it. Those are the really fun shots. Yeah. Right, right. Those right. Fun. All right, speaking of fun shots, what do you say we wrap up this, this Phantom from 10,000 Leagues film? Sounds good. All right, off we go to the end of the Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. Don't go away after the credits because the, the Orwigs are going to tell us how to get the book. They're going to tell us what they're doing next. And uh, Tangela's going to sit here and make faces, so you don't want to miss it. See you soon. You're working very late tonight, aren't you, Ethel? I uh, had some work to clean up. Good night.
Kettle. I believe you were looking for these. Defeated. Dr. Stevens, I want to apologize to you for my rudeness this afternoon. I've had a few very trying days. Of course, I understand. Maybe I better leave. Come in. Professor King? That's right. Are you at the college tonight? Yes, for a while. Mind telling me when you left? About an hour ago, I think. What's this all about? Your secretary, Miss Hall, was found murdered a short while ago. Ethel. She left the college. A few minutes later, you followed. That it? I don't grasp the significance of that fact. Do you think that I would take a human life? Willfully, deliberately? She just as well as told me you were going to kill her. She was killed with one of the college's spear guns. Am I being formally charged with this horrible thing? Not yet. But it's just a matter of time. Come on. We just gonna sit here all day? There isn't much else we can do till the sheriff gets here with his report. No, it's just like I killed Ethel myself. I rigged the keys for her to get into King's laboratory. That's it. That's what we ought to do. Get into that room of his. Well, assuming that it was King, which is something I'm not ready to do, he could have destroyed everything in his laboratory if he found Ethel in there. His equipment, his notes. Don't you see, Bill, it's... It's what's in his mind, or George's, that's important. Notes? Wait a minute. Ethel gave me this at the restaurant. She copied it from King. Mean anything to you? Oh, we solved your murder for you, Mr. Grant. Same spear gun fired both shafts. The one that tried to kill Doc here, and the one that got Miss Hall. Same fingerprints over both of them. They were George Thomas's, King's assistant. That was the dumbest killer you ever saw. Left the spear gun in his car. Same prints all over it. And to clinch it, he didn't come home last night. I guess I'd better put in for retirement. I sure had this one figured wrong. I called the college to tell the old man he was in the clear, but no one answered. He's probably at home. I think I'd better go tell him. Tell the old man I'm, I'm sorry. I uh, kind of have an idea where we can get George. Want to come along? Might be able to use some help. Come on.
I'd forgotten how pleasant it could be, just walking. You see, it's not so hard to take a day off. We'll do it again. I doubt whether the trap would permit it. The trap? Knowledge sometimes has steel jaws, like a trap, and it can either destroy the hunter or the hunted. You frighten me when you talk like that. And I promise not to. Here comes your Dr. Stevens. I have some news that I think will interest you. About Ethel's murder? The sheriff has proof it was George. I knew it wasn't you. Why would he want her dead? It's possible that Ethel found out that, uh, well, he, he had to silence her. Why the gloom? Dad's just been acquitted of murder. Lois. I'd like to talk to your father alone. Why? It'll only take a few minutes, dear. You better run on home. I'll follow you there. You better go, please. Ethel gave this to Mr. Grant. She said she copied it from your notes. Intensity increased readings of the light shaft. You call it HEF. Hydro energy force. You're quite right. There is a uranium deposit on the ocean floor. How did you activate it? That, Dr. Stevens, is my knowledge and mine alone. But it must be destroyed. It started with a simple animal experiment. One of yours, Doctor. I thought so. And I advanced it way beyond the scope of your imagination. Didn't I? Don't tell me how you created it. Tell me how to destroy it. I don't know that I want to. But, Doctor, you're not free to do as you wish. Five people have died as a result of that thing. You're quite right. But just give me one hour to think about it. It's a decision that's not easy to make. I have no other choice. Thank you. I'll meet you here. And, Doctor, stay with Lois. She'll need you. I imagine you are becoming almost as tired of seeing me as I am of making these messages. Please subscribe. I know Dad's in some kind of trouble and needs me. I know it. But your father asked you to wait here. I can't. We've got to find him. Do you know where he might be? Well, he uh, possibly could have gone to the lab. Well, then I'm going there. No, 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 wait a minute. Do I have to go alone, or are you coming with me? Perhaps you're right. You can't do any good here just waiting. Let's go.
what happened. That ship had just exploded. Lois, I've got to find your father. You can't mean that Dad had anything to do with this. I haven't got time to talk. Ted! Say that's one of God's creatures, Professor? No, Andy, that's one of man's follies, and I pray God there'll never be another one. Goodbye, Andy. show up here sooner or later. What do you want of me? Just a confession to Ethel Hall's murder. We found a spear gun in your car. Ballistic tests and fingerprints pretty well tie you into it, mister. You weren't very clever about it. Neither was your girlfriend, Wanda. No, I guess I wasn't. I should have learned more of my teacher. He killed in wholesale lots. What are you talking about? Professor King. He planted that thing out in the ocean. What's he mean, Bill? I think I know. Can you handle him yourself, Sheriff? What happened? Where's Dad? He left a few minutes ago, Miss King. Did he say where he was going? No, he just busted up the place and left in a hurry. But why destroy all this? His experiments, his life's work. I'm afraid only your father can explain that. But I still don't understand. Do you know why he did this? I think I do. What a mess. King? Yeah, I left a few minutes ago. Probably headed for the beach. We're on our way there now. Let's take my car. Come on, we can hurry.
I could have stopped to. I know he meant this power to be used to help humanity, not destroy it. I'm sure he did. And he paid for his mistake. Nature has many secrets that man mustn't disturb. And this was one of them. I know. Only he too could have understood. I'm sure he does, Lois. That's why he took his secret with him. I know, it looks awful. We tried something new, and I, I think it ended up being something old. Anyways, uh, that's the end of that film, Blown Up. You know, they used to blow up a lot of things in the 50s. Oh, yes. Films, you know? And they blew up the Doctor as well. Mm. I mean, they could have saved the Doctor. The scriptwriters, I think, need to pen a new one. If they were to make this film today, what would be different? There, it would not be radiation, it would be some sub type of rash <laughs> that's going around right what else would it be and instead of blowing up at the end it would have a good talking to is is what they do to the monster that's that's that's, that's the way she's like it. that all right oh wigs what are you doing next well we're currently working on a uh, book on television locations oh wonderful yes what are some of the locations we're talking outer limits twilight zone oh wonderful limits. outer limits yeah mm. One of my uh, favorite Outer Limits episode is Demon with the Glass Hand. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. We can that's tell you exactly where that was shot. You know, I saw that. I saw that when I was a tiny child, when yeah. I was homesick from school, and I, that came on, and it was like it's been stuck in my head forever. And I went and found it. And it, it's funny you remember these things, and they seem so fantastic. When you finally find it, when you're an adult, you're like, eh. I didn't know why that frightened me so much. But no, that was a wonderful story. All mm -hmm. right, so you're going to do one on television. That's, that's yes. absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful. Is it going to take you 2.7 years to uh, do this? Probably possible. a bit more couple, on this one. A couple, <laughs> couple, three years, possibly, yeah. A couple of three years. A lot years. of episodes for some of yeah. them. Right, yeah. right. So is it the travel or the writing part? Um, we'll travel first. Each, each trip But what be, takes the longest? Oh, uh, usually, well, the writing takes the longest. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, that and editing which photographs we're going to use, um, making sure we have the matchups exactly the way we're You know, with the two of you doing this and traveling, I would think it'd be a very efficient process. Well, you know, you're driving or you're driving, and the other one is writing, so do you think I should use an and or <laughs> this other word? You know, you could be killing two birds with one stone. Well, we usually... Keep them separate. Yeah. <laughs> all right. No. And that would interfere with all the picnicking as well, right? That's true. Yeah, we got to. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. If somebody wants to buy this book, which they all want to buy your book, where do they go? Um, well, you can get it from Amazon. Amazon.com. Well. Mm -hmm. If you haven't heard of it, they sell books and two or three other things. Or right. you can get it straight from McFarland Press. Yeah. McFarland Press, which yeah. is, do you know the? Um, it's McFarland uh, I think it's McFarland.com. McFarland, whatever. It's appearing down here under my shoe magically. Yeah. And um, Amazon, too, as well. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. give it a good review on Amazon, right? That's important. Oh, that would be great. No. Yeah. Give it a Appreciate review. Appreciate it. Say, say it was the greatest thing since Gone with the Wind. <laughs> no, that's no. what I would do. That would be good. No, I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going to say, hey, so don't say that. Say it was the greatest thing since uh, Star Wars, right? No, see? That'll work too. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Thank you so much for coming to see us again. Oh, thank you. And for then, um, you know, you should write smaller books so you should come on more often, <laughs> right? Hey, three and a half years, that's, that's too long to wait for the Orwigs to make another appearance on oh, Creature Features. Thank you. Right? Okay. All right, well, well, we'll wait patiently. In the meantime, we're going to take a read on this. But uh, as far as you guys are concerned, thank you so much for staying up late and watching our silly little show. We know you could have been doing something more constructive, like, I don't know, shoveling snow. Yeah, people are shoveling snow right now, except the ones that are watching our show. And for that reason, we like you. 
But uh, join us next week. We're going to have another movie, fun stuff. And uh, don't forget, we love you. See you next time. So, uh, Orwigs, I'm thinking if you're doing a show, a book on shows, TV shows, why don't you do an entry on Creature Features? Yeah, we've been here twice already.